So I wanted to make a video going over the episode 7 airwalk skip, as in my opinion it's the most difficult airwalk skip in the game, or uh, in the any percent run that is. Uh, it, it has a very high fail percent chance. Um, you can't really get, you know, screwed over as easily as you can in others, but this one's just really hard to figure out. So I just wanted to, you know, document some simple ways I found to make it more consistent. Um, it still has a few random ways to fail it, but for the most part, the way that I found is pretty consistent. So for starters, um, as a normal air walk, you would see you would jump and you would get the normal height off of this jump here. But if you have too much height, you won't be able to lose height at the end. So the way I found to fix this was lowering your height off this jump specifically. And to do that, you know, I found to jump farther away. Um, instead of your first jump being on the ledge, it would be a decent ways away from the ledge. So your second jump would be going quite far. And this would put your body position at a lower angle. So whenever you attack, it keeps you lower. Um, this way, by the time you get to the end, you'll be able to be low enough to have collision with the tunnel and this will allow you to lose height. Um, otherwise, you would just walk through everything at the end and you wouldn't be able to lose height to trigger the ending scene. So as we continue here, um, you wanna, the angle with your character is kind of odd. You wanna walk by everything here. Um, these boxes to your left are kill boxes is what I call them. If you touch them, you will die. I don't know why it's like that, um, I was testing some other airwalks and the same thing would happen. You touch these and it's instant death. Um, you just have to, you would just reload the checkpoint, but you want to be as close to them as possible um, to line your body up to go through this door. And you want to go through the door about midways in the middle of the door, a little to the right of it. By doing this, you'll put yourself in a pretty decent uh, position for when you go through. When you go through, you'll look up and you'll see a bunch of clouds, and this is where the difficulty sets in. You will have to use visual cues to figure out where exactly you need to go. What I did to figure out where to go is you'll see these two little white clouds here um, at the top, and this you want to keep just to the left of the middle of your screen as much as possible and you want to keep all the clouds on the upper portion of your screen as much as possible. Um, you want to kind of aim uh, your walking and direction to, just to the right of those two little white clouds. And the weird thing about this is the camera angle keeps moving by itself. It will want to shoot up or pull down or move left to, uh, left to right. It's very strange. Um, but you want to fight that and try to keep it as uh, straightforward as possible with using those two clouds as your uh, visual cues. And you need to walk a certain distance forward before turning to the right. Um, if you don't do this properly, some really weird things can happen. Um, like, like this, you'll see that you lose... Um, the camera motion that will just be fixed and uh, no one will keep running by herself as a silhouette and nothing loads, the tunnel won't load, nothing loads and you just have to reload the checkpoint. Also if your angle entering this area is bad, the same exact thing can happen. That's why I was stressing, you know, going through the door very specifically. Um, but as you keep running, uh, towards these two white clouds here. After a while, the camera will want to pull up a little bit, and you'll get comfortable to the, the time that you'll be traveling. And I kind of let it pull up and then let it pull down again, and as soon as it goes to do this, um, then I turn the camera. You'll now need to go right, 
and I don't move it that far, but the visual cue I use this is if you put those two white clouds that you were following now to the left side of the screen and this new white cloud on the right side, I now keep on the right side of the screen. So it's kind of like I'm now walking in the middle of these two and I try to keep the camera straight as possible and make sure to keep those clouds at the upper part of the screen. So the thing here, it's gonna visually feel like you're walking down hills and up hills, um, but you just need to try to keep the screen as straightforward as possible with these visual cues being consistent. And eventually what you'll hope to happen is you will load the tunnel. And as you load the tunnel, you'll go to the right side. You'll see the two robots have already spawned. Um, you'll know if you were low enough to hit co collision as soon as you get to the middle here, because it will force walk you up into the air. And it can be kind of annoying to figure out. It took me a while at first, but you have to walk up and then walk back down. And it's almost like you're walking on invisible steps. And you need to repeat this, you know, at least once, you know, maybe twice and keep making your way towards the end and middle of the tunnel. You really don't need to be that low to do it, but the annoying part is depending on the pathing you take, you might end up walking up steps on the way towards the end of the tunnel. So you do have to play around with it a bit to figure out a sweet spot. Um, but I will show, you know, a couple of the attempts I had and one of the pathings I ended up doing here at the end became quite consistent. Um, it's kind of hard to explain, but you can just watch and see. And you'll know as soon as you hit it because Nilan will start walking and then the cutscene will trigger and this will be the end of the mission. Uh, it would be the last input. Daddy, guess who's coming home? So one thing I wanted to do is just show a non-broken apart run just so you can see it all the way through in one go. One thing that is unique about this run is when I go through the door uh, you'll notice that what I described originally was how I kept going forward following the two white clouds until it pulled up to the right a bit and then down. Well, sometimes the color changes and sometimes it, it doesn't do that, but I did this one purely on just the feeling of knowing how long it usually takes. So that is one thing to keep in mind that's really hard for me to explain in words is the distance before turning. Um, a lot of it is probably going to come down to just feeling. Though I'm sure you could break these down, these runs I'm showing, and figure out like a specific amount of time you would run before turning. Um, that'd probably be better, but this is just what, what I do. I'm not saying it can't be improved, but this has really helped bring consistency to this glitch. And it took me a really long time to get this one to work in the tunnel, but I'm just going to show the beginning and the end of this one. And then the last clip is going to be non-sped up, uh, non-broken apart or anything, just a full solid run. And the end of uh, the tunnel, I did really good with um, lowering my movement and getting to the cutscene very fast. But enjoy.
Daddy. Guess he's coming home.